<laughs> Sorry, I should have recorded this before. <laughs> Shoot. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that, and I guess that's that's part of this idea of decentralization. It, it would hopefully free stuff up. But again, there needs to be a central point of communication and potentially that is the role of a, a technical working committee where that that is the group that that these sort of larger requests go to and then you know we have materials that we can reference to we just yeah so uh, yes, does anyone but like but wait. like on, on like andre said this needs to be people like you that don't need to that no don't have the publication pressure um and are sort of free to help well, develop uh, near I, I i am still soft money on the, so um yeah um does someone else want to put up their hand Uh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, Dave. Did you? No, Don, you're muted. There we go. Yeah, no, I think I'm okay. I was just going to uh, bring up a point that was made yesterday in the taxonomy session of <clears throat> providing more tools for data stewards to deal with some of the problems you're dealing with, uh, like. Uh, a lot of those were listed by uh, Stefan in his talk about problems with the taxonomy tables. Um, and there's various other things that might pertain to harmonization tables or aggregate data sets or some other things that maybe just by providing some tools, guidance, protocol that might not take too long, uh, you could decentralize some of those things. You could have data stewards taking care of some of the issues that you now have to deal with. Hmm. I don't know how difficult those would be, but maybe that's something that the committee could consider. Uh, Thomas, let's just wait for a second. Was someone else gonna talk before Don did? I think Suzette wanted to say some things. Thomas, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's okay. I'm I just I, I think I think one one avenue to um to enhance could be the the downloadable uh, PostgreSQL versions or these things that you put on the on the internet Docker, um, because uh, that and and maybe find uh, encourage people. It doesn't have to be you, uh, but encourage people to sort of uh, provide example SQL codes, um, mm -hmm. because. Um, in that way, it's much easier to then um, sort out these things that uh, that Dawn mentioned. Um, also, the uh, I mean, the way Stefan uh, discovered all these things, and and he had to tell me yesterday after the meeting was that uh, in Telia you can actually there's a button to use the Telia APIs and and run queries. Yeah, uh, I didn't know that. Um, and these sort of things, sort of revealing all of these information of the near term environment um, <clears throat> to to frequent users um, and empower frequent users um, also to uh, to pursue the pathway via the the, the PostgreSQL database uh, would empower and enable uh, many of the the users, which are not super um, IT people or not super coding people, or maybe slightly, um, to to find out some of these things and to help them um, identify them, report them, and maybe even partially repair them. I think this is an avenue in, in teaching um, that hasn't been pursued um, mm -hmm. and, and has a lot of potential. So I, I will say that in the Neotoma manual, I spent a lot of time, uh, if you go through to the different tables, uh, oftentimes at, at the end of every, almost every table, there is a section called like SQL example that then has examples of, 
you know, like uh, I find the top contributor for each constituent database uh, and it will. So so there are a lot. I think it's just a question of how do we make those more visible? Yeah, um, just just advertising them uh, may already yeah. help. Um, I just didn't think of them. And um, and, and I'm realizing that um, this avenue uh, provides access to, to to many questions that I otherwise cannot answer. Yeah. No, a hundred percent agreed. I think the other, like um, to, to go along with that. So in the teaching materials that we provide, we now do have a chunk that sort of says like, here are other resources. We advertise the use of the database and point out that there are SQL examples for people who are interested in using that. Um, and I think one of the things that you also mentioned uh, and that Don mentioned as well, like, in in the state of the database document that's that's also out there there are like places where i check for anomalies using both sql and r um so a lot of the stuff that stefan did could also be done using the r package um but uh, i know that there are other people who have sent me things saying like i went through and looked for data sets where there are only even numbers in the counts and this may indicate like something that's been transformed from percentages or something like that. And so there are other sort of checks that we can do. And I've been trying to record those as code chunks. It's just like, yeah, it's like communicating that and, and sort of saying, here's where all these things are. Maybe again, there's a place where Stefan's things can go and some of my checks can go and stuff so that people can go through those and, um, like have have them in one shareable place because I haven't seen his results, right? Like the the first time that I've seen what he did was yesterday when he showed it. And then it would be great to be able to look at that because then um, you know, so uh yeah, so having some sort of centralized like snippet place or something like that. Uh, how are, oh, we're at 10. Great. I'm going to stop recording. Then you can say what you really think. <laughs>